In this class, I would like to show you how to work with checkboxes that share the same name. You will be using an if statement and a for each loop. Because they all share the same name, they form what is called an associative array. An associative array is different than a traditional array in that it is not index-based, however, name-based or key-based. So we have name value pairs or key value pairs. However, it lends itself to easily being looped through using a for each loop. There are other functions out there that allow us to also loop through an array and we will look at them later. So we are looking at the same form that we worked with last week and we have check your favorite foods. Usually checkboxes are not required fields. However, what we'll be doing is showing how you can determine if they're checked or not, and if they are checked, how to retrieve the values. This example in this video, I will show two different approaches. Both approaches use the form being posted to itself. So if we look at the HTML, Here's our doc type, here's our head section with our styles, and here's our body section. The same as what we had the last time with one exception. I have changed the individual names in my checkboxes to indicate the food array with these double brackets. Now this is one approach that is used in this book, and it's commonly used on the internet. This idea of using the brackets in an HTML form as the name is not necessarily utilized by other programming languages. However, PHP can utilize this. So we always have to have unique IDs and unique values. But it's very important that none of the code be executed until we actually click the submit button. Here is my action of the form, and I am posting it to itself, and I am also using the HTML special cares function to avoid any possible cross-site scripting attacks. And we are using a post. Our PHP is in the head section, and notice I have this area set up, although I'm not using it in this code. So we only want to be executing this code if indeed the form is posted. And here we have an if statement. Here is the opening if and the else. Inside my if I have my for each. And notice I have chosen to write my braces down in this example. You can use another consistent format should you wish. So the first thing we're looking at is this array empty? Here we have the dollar underscore post server variable. If we give it the name of a form element, we can retrieve the values. And the dollar underscore post in and of itself is an array. It is the collection of all the name value pairs. So here we're saying if it's empty. And in our case, that works well. Because technically, if a checkbox is not checked, it returns no value, which is essentially a null value. So in this case, we could check if it was null or we could check if it was empty. So if it is indeed empty, we're going to echo, please select a favorite food. Else, however, if, if this statement does return true, then we will execute the code inside the curly braces. To begin, I will echo back a statement. You have selected the following foods. And here's my for each. So what we're saying is for every name in this array, and this is the syntax as checked. And it doesn't have checked, it's just a variable. I could call it as value, as XYZ. It's a variable placeholder and what it's doing it's returning the values. 
every time we loop through. And so here I'm echoing back inside a paragraph the individual values. Now, I have an echo statement here, an echo statement here, an echo statement here. These echo statements are just going to show up right at the top because I have no placeholders essentially for them in my document. So if we actually look at this, and if I were to click the button for send data, here it says please select a favorite food. There's a class which is making it red. It shows up at the top. Now if I check all three of them, and I click submit a second time, there they are. Now if we were to look at the source code, it's not very well formatted. However, it works. We have not coded in any of our line breaks or BR elements or, in this case, tabs to line up the code. And it just, notice it's not even in the body. So that's a good way of testing. However, in a real situation, you want to write syntactically correct HTML. You don't want echoes on top of your doc type. Let's take a look at our second form. And let's take a look at our source code. Here I have a variable for my message. I will be building a string from my for loop. I also have my variables for my HTML break, my carriage return, and a tab. Before we look at the code, let's take a look at what we have in our HTML document. Underneath, please check your favorite foods. Here's my PHP echo. So in my PHP code, I will be building a string and outputting it here. That string will contain HTML, other outputs, and also my formatting characters for my view source. Notice if you were to load the page and look at it, it would just be an empty space. I do not have any HTML placeholders because having an empty P element would actually be not technically correct. We're not supposed to have empty elements. So if we take a look at the code, our code is pretty much the same. Here we're only going to run this code if we have submitted the form and we have our first if and our else, just like we did before. Except that we're not echoing, we're building an expression to store in the variable. So here we have if not empty dollar post so if this returns true, we start building the string. How you build a string in PHP is dot equal. Remember the dot is for concatenating. Other languages use the plus equal. In PHP, you use the plus equal if you're building numeric expressions. When you're building string expressions, you use the dot equal. So I'm starting with my h3. Now I'm concatenating with a line break. Now here's my for each again. So I'm building, I'm adding to that string a tab because I'm going to be outputting a paragraph. And because my code is lined up, it's not flush to the left, I want to tab that over. So here's my opening p and I'm concatenating the value in here, concatenating my closing P, now I'm concatenating a line break. So this is going to happen for as many values that are checked. At the end of all this, what we're going to do, we're going to have one, two, or three paragraphs. All right, what we want to do is we want to put a couple breaks underneath it. But before we do that, we want to tab over and then put our break then we want to hit, may have a carriage return down to the next line, then tab over, then put our break, then carriage return. Notice this line of code is outside the loop. So we're starting here with this H3. It's going to display three paragraphs at the most. After those three paragraphs, this line of code is going to put two breaks. And here's our else. And here again, we want to separate this from what's underneath it. So we want a line break and then a tab before our HTML BR character and then another line break. Let's take a look at our web page.
if I send this data, now notice, please select a favorite food. If I look at the source code, look how nicely that's lined up. There we have our output. Notice we needed to tab over before we put that break and we have a line break so that everything looks like the rest of it. And I would like to also point out the action of our form here again because we're running on a server. It can give us a forward forward slash to the root. This, this will not work in a, in a browser. Should I check all three foods and I now send the data? You have selected the following foods. There they are. So let's take a look at our source code here. Here we have our H3 and our three paragraphs. Notice how nicely the breaks are lined up here. Another feature that was added to this example is the ability to keep the check marks in the boxes because when we submit the form to itself, it loses all its values. Here again, this is not necessarily that important, but you might need to do this at some point on an order form that extends over multiple pages. Notice I checked pizza, we see pizza, and we see the checkbox. If I were to uncheck pizza, check burger, click send, here we are. If I were to have two checkboxes, there we are. Three, there we are. Uncheck them, there we are. So let's take a look at how this is accomplished. We've already looked at using the dollar underscore post as an associative array, returning the values for the name of this element. And this element is food. We have also learned that PHP allows us to indicate in our HTML document that food is an array by inserting the brackets after the name. So when we're using dollar in underscore post, in order to determine what values were checked, it understands it's an array and it works very well. However, when it comes to putting the one-sided HTML checked attribute into the checkbox in order to make it checked, PHP has a hard time understanding that this is an array. Therefore, we need to use the inArray function. Inside my input type equals checkbox, I am inserting a block of PHP code. Notice this is where the angle bracket ends for my HTML element, which means that when the page initially loads, we have to make sure that there isn't anything set that it might not know about. We will be using an if statement here and we have a compound condition. First we have the isSet function which returns true or false and that will return true if we do have a value set for this HTML element and when the page loads we do not because we haven't checked anything yet. Once we do check something then we hit the submit button then this will return true. Our second condition, and this is where we check for the value, here's our in array function, and it takes two parameters. The first parameter is the value that we're looking for, and the second parameter is our array. Now here it understands that this is the array because we're using the in array function. Outside of it, it, it will not work, regardless of how you try to set this up. So this is the way that you would display the check mark in the HTML element. And here we have echo checked. What I have done in my next two checkboxes, I have just written this out long wise so that it is formatted neatly in my HTML document. So let's take a look at our source code. So here we have the word checked inside our checkbox. Notice it kind of drops down due to the way we laid out our PHP code. Now it looks a little cleaner. So this is the, the view source, and what we're doing is we're generating HTML, putting this one-sided attribute in there, 
which will be displayed after we post this form.